Good morning, church. Welcome back to Canaan Church Online. If this is your very first time joining us, we want to warmly welcome you and we hope that you would have a blessed experience this morning. If you are a Canaan Church member, then don't forget to say hello, greet each other on the YouTube chat box or on Facebook Live. You know, church, we have been doing online service for quite some time, about one and a half years, and we are very excited to tell you that we will be opening our church doors again. We're going to have our in-person gatherings on the 5th of December onwards. So do mark in your calendar and come and let's worship together in person. I can't wait to meet you all after such a long break. Um, Today, we're going to start off with reading the word together and then Pastor, we're going to sing a worship song and then Pastor Daniel is going to come and speak. Before we go into reading the scripture together, just a little bit of announcements. We are still having our online Wednesday prayer meetings and also online cell groups. We do it via Zoom. So if you'd like to join us, just leave us a comment or a message or email and we will then send you the Zoom link for the cell groups and also for Wednesday prayer meetings. You know, church, we would not have been able to do um, all the different ministries on the online matters, um, online services and all those without your generous contribution. So if you would like to continue to support our ministry so that we can bless others, so you, all you need to do is you can give online. Um, we've got a QR code that you can scan. You scan it and then um, you can contribute to the church and to contribute to the ministry. All right, let's just read Psalms together this morning. Psalm 92 It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. Amen. Good morning church, join me as we worship God this morning. Let's sing the first song, Faithful Now.
gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I
Hello Church! Welcome back once again to our online service. I am sure that you have seen that the Church will open its door this coming December 5, 2021. And I hope that just like me, you are very excited to come and meet up physically with all of us. And I'm sure the Lord is very much excited to see us coming together, glorifying Him in one spirit. So come join us, mark your calendars, put a reminder on your phone, put a sticky note in your refrigerator, and whichever places in your house where we can see and be notified that this coming December 5 is a time to go to Canaan Church, Rihartamas. So see you all there. And let me also take this opportunity to invite all of you to come and join us for a time of fellowship in the Filipino service this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. We are meeting up physically and online. So if you are in Kuala Lumpur, come and join us at Canaan Church Rihartamas Level 2 for physical Filipino service at 1.30 p.m. Or you can also tune in in our Canaan Church Rihartamas Filipino Ministry Facebook page. Well, as we get ready and be excited to meet up all together once again, may we not forget that today there is a Word of God prepared fresh for all of us and i'm sure that you are excited to listen to the word of god so let us now prepare our hearts as we come together and listen to the word of god before that let us bow down in prayer our precious heavenly father creator of heaven and earth king of kings and lord of lords we acknowledge dear god that without you we are nothing and we want to say thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have done and for all the things that you are going to do for us. Lord, as one church, we want to invite your holy presence that you will open up your doors for us, that you will open up the heart of your people to welcome your word prepared by Pastor Daniel to all of us. Let your anointing flow, O God. Let your Holy Spirit speak to us. Let your word reveal to us, Lord, the lessons, the transformation that we need, the encouragement that we need, O God. And that, Lord, we will come out filled in this morning service, filled by your presence, filled by your love, and filled by the power that comes from you, O Lord. Lord God, we want to declare victory upon victory upon your word this morning. Lord, bless your servant. Let your anointing flow, O Lord God. Let your blessings flow even right now. Lord, for all of us, may we all feel your wonderful presence in our midst. And again, God, we want to commit everything into your hands. May all glory, all honor, and thanksgiving belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now listen to the word of God prepared by Reverend Daniel Lo. God bless us all. A very good morning to every one of you. The Bible tells us from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. And today is a day of celebration. It's a day of the Lord. It's a day where we can come before His presence and worship Him in spirit and in truth. May I encourage you by faith, believe that something good is going to happen today. Somebody say Amen. Uh, just a quick announcement before I share the Word of God. A good news is that the first week of December, we are going to start our physical church service again. That's right. We are going to reopen uh, the physical site and uh, we want to encourage all of you uh, to get excited, to get ready, and uh, we pray that you will join us uh, gathering together in the house of the Lord. Once again, that is on the first week of December, that is 5th of December. Amen. Let us just look to the Lord in prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day that you have given to us. We thank you that you are so good to every one of us. Today, as we look into your precious word, we pray in Jesus' name, your Holy Spirit will speak to us. We thank you 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my message today is entitled, The God You Can Trust. And we are going to look into one of the most popular stories in Moses' life. That is on the crossing of the Red Sea. And this story is recorded in Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 to 31. We are not going to read the entire passage because it's very long, but I'm going to share with you this story. And along the way, I will just highlight some of the verses. Now, here's the story. Moses, Pharaoh actually had finally given Moses permission to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. But once they started on the journey, Pharaoh changed his mind. He realized that he had just lost the services of tens of thousands of workers. And without that pool of free labor, his own people would have to go to work. So Pharaoh assembled his army and set out after the Israelites. Now, the Israelites during that time had come to the bank of the Red Sea and had set up camp at a place called Pi Hahiroth. And all of a sudden, they noticed that the army is approaching. More than 600 chariots, best chariots in full pursuit. They began to realize that they were facing an impossible situation with no possible means of escape. Why? Because in front of them was the Red Sea. Behind them was the Egyptian army. So they had no way to turn. And it appears that their only options were either to be killed in battle or drown trying to swim across the Red Sea. Seemingly, they had placed themselves into a corner and things look absolutely hopeless. Well, similarly, when you and I are facing a Red Sea experience, what are we going to do? When we are in such a crisis or in like maybe a dead end, a situation where we do not know what to do, what are we going to do? Well, there are five lessons we can learn through this story on how we can deal with difficult situations in life. I'd like to share with you these five lessons. The God that you can trust. The first lesson is recognize God's purpose. You know, the events in your life do not happen by accident. God is in control of everything. He had a purpose for bringing the Israelites to the Red Sea. And likewise, <coughs> He has a purpose 
for the Red Sea you face to do. He wants to accomplish basically two things. That is, he wants to make known his glory. That is found in verse 4. He says that, but I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. Another reason is that he wants to teach you and I today to keep trusting in him even more. Verse 31 says, And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord display against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Well, the Red Sea you are facing serves as a purpose. God can use it to make known his glory and to strengthen the bond between you and Him. You can come through this ordeal with faith even stronger than you had before. And this is God's purpose in your life. So friends, what is your Red Sea today? Is it your illness? Is it your job? Your studies? your career, your finance, your family relationships, or even your marital relationships. And as you face the Red Sea, remember that God has a purpose for you so that His name will be glorified and to teach you and I to trust Him even more. That's the first lesson. The second lesson we can learn is regain God's perspective. You know, when the Israelites looked up and saw the Egyptian army approaching from the distance, do you know what their immediate response was? Sad to say that they panic. At the same time, they murmur. You know, the Bible says in verse 11 and verse 12, Verse 11 says, they say to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? It is really amazing that this would be the attitude considering how they had weakness the power of God in Egypt for so many years. But they had already forgotten about that and now they were convinced that this was the end maybe of their life. And they went on to say in verse 12, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptian than to die in the desert. You know, as they look into the difficult situation, they seem to have lost God's perspective and trust. It would be better to be slave in Egypt than to die in the desert. That's what they say. But God didn't intend for them to do either. He had plans for them. Plans greater than they could imagine. You know, so often we are like the people of Israel when we are confronted with difficult situation. We choose not to meet the situation head on. So often we use the word probably we should not have. It's like we should not have listened to him. We should not have chosen this path. We should not have believed what he said. We should not have. We should not have. Friends, if we trusted God, then we must believe that he knows our situation and he has the best for our lives. Can somebody say amen? You know, there are many times 
And there are times when God wants us to go through tough situations in life. He doesn't want us to run from the situation. He wants us to meet it head on with courage and the conviction that He will see us through. So let us, friends, let us look at life from God's perspective and trust His judgment. We were destined for greatness. And the third lesson we can learn here is that rely on God's promise. We can endure just about anything if we know the outcome, isn't it? However, one of the most difficult aspects of facing the Red Sea is dealing with feelings of hopelessness and helplessness. When you are facing a difficult or impossible situation, it looks like everything is falling apart. Like there is no chance things will work out out the way they should Worst, when you have lost your trust and faith in God. You know, when you are facing a Red Sea, may I encourage you to rely on God's promise. What is God's promise? Moses spoke to the people in verses 13 and 14. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And here through these two verses, God promises us two things. That is number one, He promises to deliver us from the situation. And secondly, He promises to fight for us. That's right. The battle belongs to the Lord. You know, the great comfort that we have even further from these two verses as we rely on God's promise that it involves these three things. It says, fear not, stand firm, and be still. So when we are facing situations of very difficult or crisis in life, remember these three comforts, what God wants us to know as we act on it. Fear not, stand firm, and be still. You know, as you face the Red Sea in your life, with the enemy closing in from behind, rely on God's promise to see you through. The fourth lesson we can learn here is rest in God's protection. You know, when the Israelites first began the journey, they were led by a cloud by night, by day, and a fire by night. When they arrived at the bank of the Red Sea, and Pharaoh's army began closing in, the cloud moved behind the Israelites and the Egyptians. In fact, the Bible says in verses 19 to 20, it says, Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. A cloud by day and a fire by night simply tells us of God's divine protection. Even before God delivered His people through miracle of parting the Red Sea, they can rest in God's protection. 
You know, similarly, when we look into our difficult situation, let us look with the eyes of faith that God has never forsaken or abandoned us. Abandoned us. He knows and His protection is always upon us. You know, and finally, the, five, the fifth lesson I believe we can learn in dealing with difficult situations is this. Reach out for, or reach for God's power. Reach for God's power. Verse 16 says, Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. You see, the staff that Moses carried symbolized God's power in his life. The staff was not a magic, but it symbolized the power of God. And whenever Moses raised the staff, the power of God is displayed. You can see all these stories after stories, even in the book of Exodus. You know, God wants to deliver you from the difficult situation you face today. He wants to part the Red Sea for you. For it to happen, you have to stretch out your hand and reach for God's power. You see, God's power is available to us today. If we are willing to stretch forth our hands, we will experience His power and the miracle. Getting to the other side of the Red Sea requires us to move in faith or even to move by faith and to keep trusting in God no matter what. By faith, let us reach out to God's power. He will provide. He will give us the breakthrough. Somebody say amen. You know, in conclusion, as many of you know that last month I went through the surgery to remove the kidney stone. You know, just a year before that, I went through, just last year, in fact, Actually, I went through the first round of procedure by going through what they call the ESWL by using short wave to just blast the stone from the external. Well, the procedure was successful, but somehow the stone that was being broken into smaller pieces that is less than a three, uh, less than three mm, somehow it it was not able to flush out. Well. After seeing the doctor, I thought that uh, the doctor said, well, since it's, it's still there, very likely that it will not be able to flush out. And, uh, but we just monitor the situation. You know, at that moment to me is that I asked the Lord, oh Lord, why? Why this happen? You know, I thought everything will be all right. And uh, I just decided to wait since, uh, you know, just keep on praying and trusting God that probably God, you just do a miracle and let the stones just, just you know, uh, flush out as I, as, as I trust in you. But somehow it did not happen and more than about a year, I went to see the doctor again and uh, through the outer shroud, I discovered that uh, the, the two stones, you know, that were still there, have formed back and now uh, it's became even, it has become even uh, bigger. And uh, so it is a time bomb. It is the size of that stone is about 8.5 to 9 mm. So the specialist recommended, well, I think uh, instead of uh, delaying, I think it is important for us to go through the surgery, the procedure, through laser, and just once and for all, blast it and remove it. And that's how it came about. Last, just last month, went through the whole procedure. And uh, thank God, I want to thank the Lord, you know, uh, there is a minimum, the pain was bearable, and though there, are, there was some discomfort, 
So I'd like to thank the Lord. I do not know why this I have to go through, but I just trust the Lord. I want to thank God for many of you who have prayed for me. And I want to thank some of you, you know, after my surgery, you really have the heart for ministers of God's word. You know, you provided, uh, you boy a nutritious soup and even food for me to, to, to eat and to drink so that I can bounce back, you know, as soon as possible so that my recovery uh, will be uh, much quicker. And I thank God, you know, after looking back what's happening after the surgery, I realized that my recovery was really good and was really fast. I believe that God used many of you. At the same time, it is the Lord's healing power upon my life. But at the same time, you know, as I recall back all this incident, I really want to thank God for God's protection. You know, the stone was getting bigger and bigger inside the kidney, but somehow, you know, if it drops, Wow, it will be very painful, but God is good. God just put it there, you know, and uh, all this while there were no symptoms, no <laughs> symptoms, no severe pain, but somehow I, I went through the process and I want to thank the Lord once again for the successful surgery. Thank the Lord once again for many of you who have prayed for me and thank you once again for guiding and also providing for me. Praise God. You know, friends, all of us will go through difficult situations in life, but we must keep on trusting the God that we believe. So today, are you facing the Red Sea? And may I encourage you to trust God, trust His plans, because His plans for your life is not to harm you. He has a plan and a future for you. He will get you to the other side of the Red Sea. Remember, when He does, make sure that others will see His glory and your relationship with Him will grow even stronger. I'd like to share with you verses 29 to 31. It says, but the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord display against the Egyptians, People fear the Lord and put their trust in Him and in Moses, His servant. So let us, friends, keep trusting God in our situation. He will fight the battle for us. So remember these five lessons when we face difficult situations in life. Number one, recognize God's purpose. Two, regain God's perspective. Third, rely on God's promise. Fourth, rest in God's protection. And finally, the fifth lesson is reach for God's power. <laughs> reach for God's power. Amen. Well, as we reflect upon what has been shared today, the question I'd like to ask you today is, are you facing a difficult situation in your life? So may I encourage you to bring your request to God and trust Him. What is trust? The Cambridge Dictionary defines trust as follows. To believe that someone is good and honest and will not harm you, or that something is safe and reliable. So is the God that we believe in today good? 
Is the God that we are worshipping all this while on us? Is the God that we have been, been believing that He will not harm us, that He is safe and reliable? And I'm sure all the answers is yes, 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 and amen. And if it is so, let us come by faith and trust Him continuously. And I trust that whatever situations in life that you are in, may I encourage you to just bring before God today. Believe that He will open the Red Sea and deliver you from your situation. He is the God that you can trust today and forevermore. So whether it is sickness, whether it is a situation in your job, or whether it is a family relationship, or whether it is a marital relationship or studies, whatever it is today, may I encourage you to just surrender it to the Lord and just trust in Him. He is indeed the God that you can trust. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your precious word today. Even as we learn great lessons of how you have instructed and guided the people of Israel, even to the place of safety from crossing the Red Sea. Father, even in each one of our lives, you know, as they bring before you their various requests, the difficult situations in life. Father, I just want to pray and believe by faith that you are going to grant and, under, and answer them and grant them the desires of the heart. Father, no matter how difficult in your eyes, it is not impossible. You love us, you love your children, and we pray in Jesus' name right now that you are going to give them the breakthrough. Father, we thank you. We thank you for precious lesson. We thank you that you are indeed a God who loves us. You are indeed a God who will always protect us. You are a God who will always guide and lead us and help us to have the faith to continue to trust in you. Go with us, we pray, throughout this week that we continue to pray for your grace and mercy and your guidance upon each and every one of our lives as we put our total trust in you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week for the Lord Jesus Christ.
Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. He is Lord, Lord. Just alone. 